Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to be making a fantasy house out of everyday household cardboard. But we're going to need a lot of it. So this video is for first time terrain makers, pretty much anyone that's never made a fantasy house out of cardboard before. I will be using terminology that will seem pretty basic for a lot of people and you know what that's all right. This series is going to take you if you follow it from having never made a house all the way up to a small village. So let's start with one material at a time and today's material is cardboard. Now as you can see there's a lot of variation in cardboard in the world. You've got your standard corrugated packaging cardboard, you've got this rather thin cereal box card and then you've got this sort of in-between size which in some cases is just condensed, in others it's corrugated, but it's very thin. It's, it's not as thin as cereal box, but it's a lot thinner than regular. Now, of course there's toilet rolls and kitchen rolls, but we're not going to be looking at those in today's episode. Tools you will need to make your very first fantasy house are scissors, a ruler, craft knife, tweezers and a pencil and then a variety of glues now super glue is necessary and then it's whatever your favorite kind of cardboard glue is so you pva hot glue wood glue whatever whatever glue you like to use by all means i know some people are quite fun uh, fond of using modge podge but we do not have access to that here in the uk so the first step in making any any terrain project is sorting out your materials. Now in the case of cardboard boxes, it's taking them apart into flat, roughly A4 sized pieces. So we're cutting along any creases, any folds. We're removing every tab, every flap, because what you want is a lot like when you're drawing a picture, you want a flat blank canvas and you don't necessarily want to have all the extra little knobbly bits. Now, to make a fantasy house, you need to determine the scale. I'm going to be using this little spearman, this little fantasy guy, to figure out, well, this house is probably going to have walls that are about two inches high. The total height of this build would be anywhere between five and six inches, so it's quite, it's quite tall. It's going to be a two-story house. Now, taking our first piece of corrugated cardboard, we're just trimming the edges, making sure that they're straight and at right angles so that we can mark out our first wall, which is two inches in height. Now, I like to make these projects up as I go along. I don't have strict measurements. You will see a lot of videos and a lot of tutorials where they will measure it to the last detail. I'm not that kind of person. I like to eyeball it. If I think a wall is long enough, that's how long that wall is. But there are some tricks that you can carry over. So for example, here is the first wall nice and cut. But if you want to make a duplicate of that, you can use it as a template, as a jig, and just cut along the line. And there you go. Before you know it, you've got four walls that are all exactly the same. Okay, so when making a fantasy house, the actual architecture is very fluid. You don't need to worry about making this period or historically accurate. It can include a whole variety of different styles because at the end of the day it's fantasy. It doesn't have to make 100% sense. I mean typically model makers will go for a sort of Tudor era sort of looking house but you can have gothic elements in there, you can have Middle Eastern elements in there. It's whatever you like. In this example, we're going to go for a timbered bottom ground floor and a wattle and daub looking second floor. So once you've got two walls that are the correct size for your first floor, you're going to want to get a bigger piece of cardboard that's longer than two inches so that you can measure out the roof shape as well. Because rather than try and make a first floor and then a separate roof, we're going to build the, the roof straight onto it so it's going to be structurally more sound and easier. So measure out about roughly halfway across the floor. In this case it's something weird like one and three quarter inches. And then draw a line straight across that piece of cardboard. Use one of the other walls as a template, same as when making the other 
walls on the ground and first floor. But now you see you've got the space to be able to draw in the shape of the roof. So just roughly sketch it in with a pencil. Have a look, see what you think. You're probably going to want it to be steeper. Um, you know, get a good 45 degree angle on there. It doesn't need to be perfect because same as with all the other walls we've cut so far, we're going to use it as a template. We're going to use it as a, as a jig to cut its twin. So using a ruler, we can just make that nice and straight. And then, as you can see, I've cut all of those out. And now we have all the components we need to actually make the foundation of this house. So let's start with the ground floor. Now, before we start gluing these together, we're going to need that incredibly important feature on a house, a door. So again, roughly measure out the center. And then I typically make my doors about an inch wide by an inch and a quarter in height. They're not they're not massively tall things. I mean, it's only 28 millimeter figures that are going sort of in and out of these things. I mean, if you're making a house for an ogre or a troll, you could make it bigger or smaller, depending on what you need. And then once you've drawn out the shape of your door, just use a craft knife and carefully cut that out. Now it's at this stage you need to decide, are your windows going to be open? Are they going to be closed? Because you would want to do the same if you're going to have them open. What we're going to do here is cut out the actual door itself. So using some cereal box card, just roughly sketch out the inside of the door so that we know that's the space that the door has to fill. And then we're going to cut a tab around that. So it's only like half a centimeter all the way around, but that gives us the space to then glue onto the frame. Now making a door is the easiest thing in the world. It's the easiest thing. Just take some cardboard, pair of scissors and cut out little strips. These are only two millimeters wide, if that, but these do not need to be measured. This is a wooden door. So it's going to have wooden planks that are all different shapes and sizes. And remember, this is fantasy, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Imperfections add to it, if anything. Now we're gonna use super glue to glue these on. I will say for this project, open a window, open, get some ventilation. You don't wanna be breathing this stuff in. Take breaks. Um, you can use PVA or wood glue. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using super glue to keep it moving so you can see it all rather than having to stop and wait for it to dry every time but it's exactly the same if using pva you're just putting a bit of glue on and then pushing it across until it fills the area that we marked out the shape of the door now once you've glued all of those in place you will have these little tassels hanging off the bottom that is fine just take a pair of scissors and cut those off by doing it this way, we're not having to worry about measuring out individual lengths each time. We can just glue them straight on. The only exception is when we're making the crossbars that are holding the door together, as it were. These, you do want to take a pencil and just mark those out. And remember, this is cardboard. It's as simple as just taking a pair of scissors and snip. There you go. Nice and easy glue both of those in place and we're ready to move on. Now one element you will see repeated in this video is that the more detail you can achieve in your terrain the better. The more you put it into it the better it looks. So we're going to add a cross beam to this door as support and it's going to make it look even more rustic and even more cool. The more you add the more time you take the better it looks. As you can see I've even marked out an area where a little door handle could go but we're not going to worry about that in this video. Remember if you guys have never made one of these before we've got to keep this simple. So let's glue this door in place and as you can see from the back the tabs are doing their jobs and they're holding the door there. And there you go, we have now made a door for this fantasy house. The next step is, of course, gluing the floors together. So 
Again, you can use whatever glue you're comfortable with. I'm going to use a hot glue gun. It's just a simple case of drawing a bead across one side and then gluing the two sides together at a right angle. So we're going to assemble this two walls at a time in these 90 degree right angle formations. Now, this is the easiest way to do this. Um, you could, you know, depending on what glue you use, rather than trying to just glue everything to one wall and trying to make it straight and, you know, and trying not to make any mistakes like that. This way, by the time we get back to the first two walls that we've glued together, it will all have had time to dry and solidify. And it's the exact same with the second floor walls. So it really is just a case of gluing them together and going on to the next one. And it's quite convenient having a cutting mat with a grid on it because you can use the grid as a bit of a guide to make sure that they're roughly 90 degrees. Once you've got some experience making these basic shapes as well, making these, these basic houses, before you know it you'll be doing the more advanced multi-story ones. This is a great time to decide is this going to be a house that you can take apart and is quite modular or is this a house that is all enclosed like nothing opens it's just one big solid lump of terrain in this tutorial the house we're making is one single solid piece so to continue that we're making the floors for both the top and the ground floor by simply drawing around them on a piece of cardboard and cutting that out to fit and once that's hot glued in place, I find just to add a little bit more support, put a drop of hot glue in each corner on the inside that will run down freely, but it'll act as a little bit of support, just a little, make it a little stronger when it's dried. So here you can see, here we are. Now we've not glued the top on yet. That's going to be done later on. It's better at this stage to have everything easy to take apart because there will be spaces that we'll need to fill, there'll be areas that will be difficult to reach if we glue it all together at this point. It's better to do that later on. One thing you can do at this stage is just go around with a pair of scissors and just trim any surfaces that have gotten a bit hairy. As I said, you don't need to worry about it being perfect at this stage, but it doesn't hurt to keep on top of it. So just running the scissors along the flat edge, using that as a guide to cut away any cardboard that's leaning over. Now we're going to start texturing the base of this house. Uh, I've said earlier that this is going to be a timbered base compared to the top. So in order to make that effect, we're turning to cereal box card again. And we're cutting out thin strips. These, these are thicker than the strips that were on the door. I'd say about three to four mil, uh, no, no larger than half a centimetre. They don't need to be very big. And by using a drop of super glue or PVA, you can simply glue those on the sides to create this wooden plank effect. Now, the irregularity here is your friend, same as when you were making the door. You don't want all the bits to be measured and perfect. You want some to be thin and narrow at one end and then quite thick at the other you want them to be like this you want it to be higgledy piggledy for want of a better word you want some some planks to be quite short some to be quite long and you want to roughly follow it all the way around as you can see and that creates quite a nice wood texture but in order to make this better we're going to need to do something about these corners now, if you look at traditional timbered houses, they would have wooden support beams holding everything up, and buttresses, and goodness, goodness knows what. And we could make those out of the cereal box cardboard. You know, that would be simple enough. But again, it's all about the texture. It's all about the detail. So by using this slightly thicker cardboard, we can create that effect. Now, we're going to cut it to the same width, same as we did just with the cereal box card. But already you can see with that shadow that it's that it's significantly thicker and it looks it will look better once you start gluing those on. 
So simply measure it to fit the side, cut it and glue it on. So do that for all the sides and before you know it, it'll look really good. It all starts coming together. Now one trick to help these edges meet up is you glue one piece on that's right up to the edge and with the second one you have it overlap and that creates that nice sharp edge that you get on a building or on a on a piece of wood as opposed to what you would normally get which is like a bit of a step between them. Now we're going to put some support beams along the center of these walls but you want to think are, am I having any windows on the ground floor? You know, This is where the actual design of the house comes into it. The way you shape the different beams that hold it up. But start relatively simple. Just some central support beams and some of those angled buttresses. And before you know it, you've got quite a nice shape. But what I'd say is don't worry about making it perfectly uniform. I swear, all the fantasy houses I see, they don't look as good as they could be because everything's done in a very mathematical and correct manner. Keep it loose. Keep it random. Have fun with it. Try things out. It doesn't matter if it doesn't work first time around because this is just made of cardboard. You know, this is your first house. So it can go a bit wonky and that's fine. So here we are going around the the first floor with cardboard now doing exactly the same except we're starting at the top and the bottom because these are the main supports that would hold the first story of the building to the second and we're going to do the same along the sides but using a pencil you can measure out where it meets up top and bottom and there you go now I know what you're thinking, you're looking at this and you're going, but James, I can still see all that corrugation that's going to stand out like a sore thumb. We will sort that later on, don't worry. Now, looking at some support beams, you can use cereal box card again, but use the thinner of the two, like like the ones that you've been using for your your wooden planks on the on the ground floor because that, that looks better. I mean, it, it's all about your personal taste and preference, but I find if you, you have them thinner than the main walls, so that three to four millimeter, as opposed to the almost half a centimeter, it does look better. Go around, create some patterns. That crisscross is not as hard as it looks. All you're doing is measuring it out with a pencil, cutting it with scissors and gluing it on. At this point, you want to decide where windows are going. It might sound ridiculous, but it is important to know which walls are going to have windows and which ones aren't, so you know how many that you need to make. And now it's time to put some detail and supports on the roof walls. I have no idea what those are called, the, uh, the walls that, that make up the shape of the roof. Now, it, there's no right or wrong style or pattern so just do something that looks good to you. I'm doing these angular. It, it creates almost like a diamond shape at the top, which I quite like. So now we're, it's finally time to glue the ground floor to the first floor. Making a roof is simple enough. You're just taking a scrap piece of corrugated cardboard, drawing roughly around it with a pencil, and using that as a guide for the amount of space that you need to cover. If you draw it so that the corrugation is lengthways, when it comes to actually cutting and folding the roof, it'll be a lot easier. But this doesn't need to be precise. This is all going to be covered up with tiles and slate, so this doesn't need to be 100% accurate. Like, like most of this build, you can have some freedom with it. And you can see by cutting alongside the corrugation. If you wanted this to be a curved roof, this is how you do it. This is how you create very easily that curved shape. Now this is quite a straight triangular roof, so we don't need to worry about that. But again, hot glue gun or wood glue or whatever glue you're comfortable with, get that roof on. 
Now I've taken the liberty of putting some extra bits of cardboard around the base of this just to reinforce the bottom but just before we get to the tiles do remember to put some along the sides of the roof so that those corrugated areas are covered up. Now this is where all these little flappy tabs of cereal box card come in handy. Normally you might look at these and go oh well you know it's not big enough I'm not going to use this but it's the tiles this is the time when these bits shine because all you need is the length you're not too worried about the width. Now these tiles these are not uniform we don't want them to be uniform but we do want them to be a good uh, half a centimeter wide by about, blah, about seven eight millimeters long they're quite they're quite long tiles so over the course of these videos i plan on showing you multiple techniques for tiling fantasy houses the roofs of fantasy houses um, the most basic simple anyone can do this tiling method is 100 percent just cutting a load of bits of cardboard a load of rectangles and just super gluing them on now you don't want to super glue all the tiles just the first layer after that point use some pva or wood glue or whatever you're comfortable using and get the rest on now the reason why i say the first line you want to be super glued on is because that creates a firm base that the rest can be built onto and you don't want that first line to be potentially sliding off the roof and sticking to your work mat or anything like that so the first row of tiles super glue those on everything after that all the way up pva wood glue whatever you want to use but that first row super glue then it's just a matter of sticking them on you don't have to go for a uniform shape the less uniform this build is the better the better it will look now if you're like me you might overdo it with the PVA and you might have areas where it will bead up and start showing through. Just take a cardboard tile and stick it up there and it will help actually create quite a ramshackle look to the building which is quite nice. But it's not so massively ramshackle that it looks like something an orc has made. Now once you've covered all the way up to the top this is where you're going to want to create that that sort of curved tile pattern that you see on houses to do that you want to cut lengths of cereal box card that are roughly double the length of your tiles because we're going to fold these over and super glue those on on top it's very simple it's very easy and it helps cover what would otherwise be quite a, an ugly looking end to quite, quite a nice roof process but yeah, just stick it on. Don't worry too much. This is all about getting you actively cutting and sticking. That's what this video is all about. You know, this isn't as difficult as it looks, boys and girls. If you can make this, then you can make any of the houses that you've seen at the beginning of this video. And you want to go all the way across, starting at one end and slightly overlapping all the way to the other. Now look at that. Doesn't that look like a good shingled roof? Now you can add some randomness to your shingles by cutting little nicks and dents in, but for the most part this will do you for your very first. Now making the windows, this is the exact same process we used for making the door. The only difference is it's not as big as a door. I'd say it's about three quarters of the size of the door. So once you've got your window width is just a matter of making sure that you're happy with how long it's going to be and then cutting out some friends <laughs> on this build we're going to have around four windows and again just make sure that they're about three quarters of the side of the door and as i said it's as simple as making the door we're cutting those really thin cardboard strips and we're just gluing those on snipping across the bottom and then the two cross supports we don't need to make the diagonal support for the windows especially not on the second floor where it's not camouflaged against anything the the background that it's on is going to be painted in that strong beige kind of look so it's not going to be hidden it's going to be very visible which is good
if it was the same texture on texture, then yeah, it'd be quite hard to see. Now, a step that a lot of people miss, but I think is super important, is riveting. Now, you might be saying, but James, how can I rivet without plastic card or rod or something like that? Well, you can do it with cardboard and you can do it in a style that's actually quite historically traditional. We're going to be making square shaped nails, as it were, square, square headed pegs. So taking a piece of card that is like one to two millimeter thick. It's very thin, very thin cereal box card. Um, we're just going to cut these tiny little squares and rectangles off the end. You can see how tiny they are with my scissors there. And this is where if you've got tweezers, use them. You can just use the point on your craft knife to just poke it into the little bit of glue that you've put on there. But all the way the, along the door, the windows, and even some of the supporting buttresses, you can put the little rivets on there. And when we paint this, this will look so good. It will make it look more detailed and and high quality than it actually is, because it's just cardboard. But people always seem to miss this out, and I don't know why. It's time consuming. But it's no more time consuming than making the roof with us, with the tiles. But it's just a simple case of a little drop of super glue and then using your tweezers or craft knife to put a little bit of cardboard on there. Very simple and it will be very effective when it's painted up. I mean, traditional medieval houses wouldn't have used or fantasy houses wouldn't have used much metal in their design because metal would have been a rare commodity and all this but you know this is for a fantasy house so that doesn't matter you can get away with it and you can always paint them to look like wooden pegs if you want sometimes it might stick to your knife or to your tweezers it's just a case of applying a bit of pressure making sure that it stays on there but here you go. After that, you can see already that looks pretty good. Now, there's a couple more things I want to do before we're finished. You, again, you can use some cereal box card to cover up that corrugation. But again, I've got something in mind for that, so don't worry. But what I would like to do is add some what are going to be metal supports to the corners of this building. Now, what I mean by that is... So I'm using cereal box card curved around each corner to look like a piece of metal, a metal support that would have been added to structurally aid the building to make sure it doesn't just fall apart. Now, one thing to finish up this build that you don't have to do, as I've said throughout, you can just use cereal box to cover up the corrugation. I'm going to use sand, sand and PVA. Now the reason for this is because it adds again another texture, another element that will make it more visually interesting and appealing on the tabletop. But something you can also do with it is use it to fill up any awkward little gaps and spaces that have been created, in this case by corrugation. So it's just a simple case of getting the PVA glue in there. And then once you've made sure that it's in the corrugation of the cardboard, just using a bit of cereal box card as a little tool to sprinkle some sand on there. Now, whenever you're using PVA glue or a hot glue gun or wood glue, it will take some time to dry. It's not as instant as super glue is. And certainly at this stage, we are in the very end. We're at, we are at the very end of the project here. So this is where the drying time is really important. Like it's, if it takes seven hours to dry, then that's how long it takes. You have to wait until it's finished drying between each stage now. So once the sand's on there, it's wait until the PVA glue is dried before you go to the next step. If you try and do it sooner, it's not going to work. And now it's time to mix up some blue.
So this is a combination of glue and paint, or paint and glue, or plue, or glaint. And yeah, it's black poster paint and some PVA glue. And this will help seal in the sand, it will help seal up the cardboard, and it will help give a layer of protection moving forwards. It'll help strengthen it all. Once you've covered that, wait for it to dry. This is where people would probably say use Mod Podge or whatever. But again, here in the UK, we don't have that easily accessible. This is the same kind of way you might base your miniatures. It's, you know, once you've got the sand glued on there, just put a bit of PVA glue on top and that helps lock everything in place. And here you can see with a spray of brown paint, that's it, you know, you have done it. You have made your first fantasy house. And already all those little details we've added, all that texture, it's really shining through. And this helps it stand out head and shoulders above some of the stuff you may otherwise see or may have made before. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. In the next video, I'll be covering how to paint it in a real basic, real simple way. Here is one that I made earlier, <laughs> just so you can see what the final result is and what we're going for, as well as what I'm talking about when I say breaking up the textures, breaking up the surfaces, and adding points of interest. Now here, I also used a toilet roll tube to create a little wooden additional tower on the side of the house. I think a big part of this is the variation. You've got to have a variety of shapes. So many fantasy houses are just like boxes put one on top of the other, but you need variety. It is the spice of life. And in the next video, I'll be covering how to paint this house. And then in the next video after that, and all the following ones, I'll be looking at the different materials and how to use them and incorporate them. It will be one new material in every single episode. And by the end of it, you will have a whole village, a whole town, a whole city of houses made. If you follow along with me, boys and girls. I hope you've had fun. I hope you've learned something. And I will see you all in the next episode. Thank you for watching and goodbye.